Hey, everybody. So here I am with Julie from StreamYard to talk about StreamYard. How are you doing, Julie? I am good. How are you doing? Good. Very good. So do you want to do a, a quick summary of what we'll be going over today? So today we're going to be talking all about StreamYard, what StreamYard is, and how you can utilize StreamYard for your business, for your brand, and really reach a wider audience versus just your posts on social media. I got started in live streaming about eight years ago at the very, very early days of live streaming and have really loved getting to develop this uh kind of live strategy and building it out and then getting to work for StreamYard and teaching other people all about going live. Excellent. Cool. So people are coming in. So welcome, everybody. Let us know where you're watching from. Yeah. I know. I am uh, then, I'm in the middle of the country. So I'm in Kansas. Uh, I always nice. say it's we're the flyover state. Nice. Yeah. And I'm in Los Angeles where it's a little bit of rain last night. So it's a little chilly these days. So nice. Well, you know, a little break from the summer heat before it gets too warm. Yeah, we usually have a little bit of a uh, heat wave during the summer. So hoping. Uh, it was it was pretty cool last summer, and then all of a sudden there was like this ten day heat wave that was <laughs> a little intense. Yeah. But uh, no fun. So we, have, uh, so we have Susanna from Sweden. Nice. Awesome. Hello, Susanna. See you here. Don't be shy. Let us know, everybody, where you're watching from. Yeah. Now, Andrew, you've been using StreamYard for quite some time, right? Yeah, I love StreamYard. Yeah. So what, what I tend to do is I will multi-stream into my Facebook groups, and then it's set to go to Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube. Okay. Um, I, I wish there was some more functionality when it's on, say, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But like working with StreamYard is great. I mean, I just set it up. And so the new thing is you schedule it in StreamYard and then it creates its own event page in the Facebook groups, which I love. Yeah, I have really liked that. And I like that it's it's it took me a little bit to get used to when Facebook made that change. But now that I've gotten used to it, I really do like it because it creates that space that now you can kind of have a little bit more interaction before you go live and before it's the day of the show. Yeah. What happened was at first I was like, Oh no, now it's creating like four different event pages. I'm like, and then it, it does seem to like on Facebook's part, they kind of make a mistake with the timing. So you do have to edit and go in and change the time. Yes. Uh, but I did realize that once they started doing this, um, viewership went up. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, that's <laughs> the way it is. That's the way it is. I've, I've learned that every time there's a change on social, we all kind of resist it. And we're like, no, 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 no. And then after a little bit, we're like, oh, no, actually, that's working. Okay. Nice. And then we have uh, Barbara. Good to see you, Barbara. Hi, Julie and Andrew. I'm watching from Andrew's artist page today. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Well, we have some good things to uh, cover. So uh, shall I share your screen? Julie? Yeah, we can do that. And we'll uh, talk a little bit about what StreamYard is. So StreamYard is a live streaming tool that is going to allow you to multi-stream out to multiple platforms. So you can go, like Andrew said, to LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook pages, Facebook profiles, Facebook groups, uh, Twitter, Twitch, and then anywhere that what we say is a custom RTMP connection, which is a real-time something or other protocol. Don't quote me on that. It's, I can't remember what the M is, but um, what that'll do is allow you to connect to other um, platforms that may not have a direct integration. It's kind of a little bit more of an advanced side of things there. But aside from your live streaming, you can also create webinars, you can do recordings, you can repurpose your content into vertical content for TikTok, shorts and reels, uh, which is on your YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok platforms. You can download your individual audio recordings for podcasting. Okay. So you've kind of got this broad range of what you can do with StreamYard. We started off, um, our tagline really was the easiest way to create professional live video. And then that kind of shifted as we created other forms of video. And we said, okay, we're actually the easiest way to create professional video. And what we're evolving into and what we're excited to really bring in this next generation of StreamYard 
is the easiest way to create professional content. So now you have this ability to do um, content creation across the board and maximize your time because ultimately, I don't know anyone who's not busy and is sitting around going, I don't have anything to do. You know, I can create all the content in the world because I don't know about the rest of you, but you've got your jobs, your projects, your house, kids, husbands, wives, all of the things and all of the people that are keeping you busy. So we want to maximize that time ability. Excellent. So what I want to do is let everybody know a couple things. We're going to do a giveaway at the end of this where we're going to give away um, some StreamYard, uh, a StreamYard Pro plan, six months for free to somebody. So make sure you're tuning in. And we'll, we'll talk about that a couple of times as more people come in that cool. stay tuned. Uh, nice. And then I want to make sure that we're really getting a chance for you guys that are watching to ask questions. I'm here, ask questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to show it, sh- demo anything. When I'm demoing, I'm going to be in another screen. Uh, so Andrew, I don't have my second monitor, like I said, uh, Just holler at me if somebody's got a question or wants to see something else because I won't see their comments while I'm over there. Great. So let's show you what StreamYard is. So when you log into StreamYard, this is your dashboard. And what's really nice about your dashboard is you can see any of your broadcasts that you've got scheduled set up. Uh, This was a test one I was running. uh, What was it? Yesterday. So uh, you can have either recordings like this says record only or if it was a scheduled live stream, it would have the scheduled date here. You can have your webinars, and we'll go into all of that, how that looks. But this is when you log in, what you're going to see initially. Correct. Then you have your video library. And in your video library, you've got all of the different videos that you have created and recorded. Um, this is one of my demo studios. So you can see it's just mostly sharing screens and doing other things like that. But you can see nice. your videos and what you want to do with them. And from here is where you can start to access, do I want to edit it, the title? Do I want to upload a thumbnail if I'm really trying to make this, you know, my full-blown studio? Do I want to trim and repurpose into those shorts, TikToks, Reels? Um, Do I want to download my recordings, share the link to view it, embed it? So this is kind of like your studio space for, you know, your recordings that are there. You have all of your destinations, and this is where you can easily add your destinations. And it is simple as clicking add destination, choosing what you want and connecting it. You just have to be logged into that Twitter page, that Facebook page, that right. LinkedIn, whatever. And it's that easy. And then um, your- and Can I add something? Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, yeah, I stream a lot to my uh, different Facebook groups. And so um, a lot of times other people even ask me to host for their Facebook uh, group. So- just to clarify, if you are going to do that with your StreamYard account, all you need to do is make sure that they make you an admin mm-hmm. of their group. And you can tell them, you know, it's just going to be temporary if, if you're nervous about that. But make you an admin. And then once you're an admin, you'll be able to search for and find that group and connect it so easily. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So then when we're, go- we're going to go back out to um, the main page. And let's see. There we are. Um, so here's where you're going to hit create when you want to create your live stream, your recording or your webinar. And it's that simple. We, we break it down for you. So you know what you're doing for this. I'm going to show you, if you were to create a live stream, you would select your destinations, or if you had a pre-recorded video and you weren't able to go live at the exact time, um, you know, you're going on vacation, but you have a live show that's every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Well, that doesn't mean you have to stop your vacation with your family to keep your live show going. You could pre-record one and then just tell your audience, this is pre-recorded, but I bring you content every Tuesday at 10 a.m. So I wanted to make sure I still brought you content this Tuesday at 10 a.m. And so that's kind of like a best practice there when you use the pre-record. In this case, we're going to go to my testing group and we would just say, you know, hello, uh, in our live. So that's going to be your title and descri- description that are going to show up on that Facebook group uh, in the event. It's going to show up on your page. It's going to show up if you, this was a LinkedIn, wherever it's going, that is your title and description that are going to show up. And then you could immediately create the broadcast and get ready to go live. 
or schedule it for later, which is what we do always recommend as a best practice, because that's where you're going to start to build up some of that engagement and more of that audience. You're going to upload a thumbnail, and that's just going to be picking any image that you've created in uh, Adobe. What is Which one is it? Adobe Express. Adobe Express, yes. I know there's so many of those Adobe products. <laughs> so, right. you know, you're going to go create your uh, thumbnail there in Adobe Express, and you can put it in, and then and, you can choose your date. And, and I would add that uh, the dimensions for the thumbnail, the graphic is 1280 by 720. Yes. Which, as she is showing now, Julie's showing that once she hovers over the question mark, it will remind you of that as well. Yep. Right? It's so nice because... We will get questions on that a lot. And I'm like, if you ever forget, you just hover over the question marks and we'll show you where some more of those are inside of the platform as well. Nice. And this little box here that says add comment instructions to my post will only show up if you were uh, scheduling this to a Facebook group. And what that comment instructions is, it is a way of StreamYard to put into your description that says, if you comment on this post and you want your name to show up, that you click on this link in the description that is streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And it gives Facebook permission to show your name and profile picture on the comment section. Otherwise you just show up as um, you Facebook user. So okay. your name and um, it profile image won't show up. So you can always and, click that. And that's where I will remind people like who are attending today I will say, please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pics so I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. Just scroll down to that description. Look for the link, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. I love that. You already have that as a banner. <laughs> that I need to take a, a lesson of that one for my own <laughs> streams and make a banner of that. That's smart. And we're going to go through how easy those banners are to make as well, uh, right. you know, in here. So once we got in here, we would just hit Create Broadcast. And it's got a start time for later today, which doesn't matter in this case. And it's taken a moment. I'm doing too many things. I'm streaming and demoing. <laughs> there we go. So then we can enter the studio. And once we enter the studio, it's going to pop up a little screen here in a second that's going to have your um, picture so you would know what you looked like. You can put your display name. This is where you can go into your settings and double check Make sure that all your settings are correct, your audio, good place to kind of get all that tested to make sure everything is the way you want it to be. Great. Enter the studio and the studio is going to remain set however it was set the last time you were in it. So the first time it'll be set with our default uh, background image, things like that. But if you then go and set up an, a background image, it is going to remain that same background image every time you log into StreamYard until you change it. So it's kind of nice because then you don't have to set it, you log out, and then you come back the day of your show and you got to reset it all. It, it's going to remain there so you can kind of pre-plan. If you can see down here, there's a little box of myself. I'm currently not on the screen, obviously, and all you do is click add to stream and you're on the screen. So it's right. really that easy. And there's different layouts. So if I had, what we'll do here is I will actually share an extra camera. And it'll just be my iMac camera. So then I could add that to the stream. And this is where you can see um, kind of your different layouts. So you could change between these, you know, because you can really swap your layouts around whatever is going to work best for you and for your stream. It's kind of strange with two of you, though, at the same time, right? <laughs> I know I multiply. You can have a conversation with yourself. I, you know, if I could only figure out how to make that duplicate come off the screen and do some work for me, that's right. I'd get so much more done. Uh, oh, and nice. then once you go live, you've got all your comments that show up on the live, and it doesn't matter where they're commenting, they're going to show up except one place. Twitter comments will not show up. Um, Twitter took away the ability to comment on the live stream so you can stream to Twitter but you can't get the comments from Twitter. So I always uh, like to say as a best practice that if I am streaming to Twitter, I'll let my Twitter audience know, hey, if you want to interact with this sh you know, stream, make sure you jump over to YouTube. That's where you're going to have to go or Facebook or wherever um, to interact. Right. And 
all you got to do to pull them up is click on them and they pull up on the screen. So as Andrew has brought comments up on both the screen earlier, that's all you're doing is clicking on them. We have this little star button here and I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see it. So this little star button is really, really nice because what it does is if you're on a stream that's just getting a lot of conversation going and you're wanting to hold those questions aside till you're ready to answer them, then you don't want to lose track of them and have to scroll up later and find them. So you click this little star and you see it created another tab right here. And then I can go over to the star tab and they're going to all be there until I unstar them. And I was going to say that was a real um, lifesaver for me when I was doing one about Adobe Firefly and we were creating, you know, generative AI, you know, prompts. So mm -hmm. people would give me a prompt that you type in or copy and paste and then you could make the, uh, the generative AI art. And what happened was so many people flooded me with all these different prompts that I had to star them. So I'd have groupings of like five to go over. Right. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And it really has um, helped, I think, with the engagement portion of the live streaming, which is something that when you're going live, you want to make sure that you are engaging with your audience and talking with them. You're welcoming them when they come into the show. You're acknowledging their questions and comments. Otherwise, at that point, you might as well just do a recording and put it out later because you're not having that two-way conversation. And that's one of the biggest benefits of live. So we talked about the banners that Andrew was creating and it's so simple. So I've already got a couple of example ones that are in here. They're just the ones that you get when you start your new StreamYard account. It's as simple as going. I hit enter. It created my banner and now I put it up. I have more than once on the fly realized I needed a banner that I didn't make for my giveaway that I was going to do or an email contact. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get a banner created and I can do it while I'm live and get it in there. Or I could say, you know, I could make it scroll across the bottom. So then you can add a ticker style that would keep scrolling. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you can have both up at the same time. And can I interject one cool thing too? Yeah. So do remember that you can also add emojis. Mm -hmm. So you can add cute little smiling faces and <laughs> whatnot. So great. Yep. So then now you can get, yeah, you can have all the emojis in there. Nice. I like to do when the, where are you watching from? I have the globe emojis on there. Um, so yeah, you can really personalize this and make it um, a lot more interactive with everybody. Excellent. In your brand tab, this is where you get to really have fun with the customization. So you can change. Now I'm going to show my display name real quick because this is going to, you need something on the screen to see these parts. So you have your brand color. Your brand color can be whatever your brand color is. And if you know the exact hex code number, it's as simple as just typing it in there. Nice. And then the theming, the theming is going to change what those boxes look like. So you can see the bubble, the classic, the minimal, and the block. And that theming is going to change all the way across um, to your banners and to your comments. So you can kind of see the difference of what those comments would look like on the screen, Excellent. depending on what theming you're on. Let's go turn that comment back off. And we're going to turn that banner off. And then you have your logos with the free plan. It comes with powered by StreamYard and you can't turn that off on our basic and pro plans. You can upload whatever logos you want, including GIF uh, logos. Oh, cool. I might even have a GIF. Let's see if I have one I can upload real fast. I might have to do that now. I, I had forgotten that you could do that. That's great. Yeah. So you can see if it uploads while that's going so you have your overlays. Your overlays can be transparent overlays, or you could have one that takes up the whole screen. Um, if you wanted something that was more of a um, advertisement or more of a announcement, you know, your thumbnail image at the very beginning. So you right. can have that overlay or you can have the transparent one. The uh, So this is where you can see the GIF um, ones. And if you have like a transparent GIF, then it just shows can I, up. Can I share screen. the one for today? So what I like to do is I will upload the graphic that we have for 
the thumbnail for say YouTube or in general when I'm sharing. So I can just, you know, quickly remind people here we are for Maximize Your Impact StreamYard with Julie Riley. Yes. Looks great. Nice and clear. Yeah. Video clips. I love this feature that we, um, and we've expanded on it so many times since I started with StreamYard, but you can upload um, up to a 10 minute. I have, mine says 60 minutes there because this is on the business plan. You can upload up to 10 minute video length for the regular plans. Um, and then a max file size, uh, I think it's less for the regular plans. I just, I didn't realize mine was going to show that way because I was in the demo studio. Um, and then your, your recommended size. But this is, a lot of people like to do countdown timers. We have one that comes standard with this account. And you can have music on them. Or if you had a um, promo video, if you had a highlight of your artwork of, um, kind of just an intro video that somebody put together for you, you can share, showcase any of that, whether it's an intro, an outro, a commercial, a sponsor highlight, a demo, whatever mm -hmm. you're needing to show. Next, I'm going to change my layout real quick. So under your settings, you've got this option for cropping your solo layout. And what that does is it allows your background to show up. And we're going to show you that because this is where now you can change your background. Mm -hmm. And you can, there's some colored built-in ones into the studio. So you can flip between any of those, or you can upload your own image. And again, it's that 1280 by 720 size, um, up to 20 megabytes for a regular file. Or if you're on the pro plan, you can have gift backgrounds and upload those mm -hmm. as well. I don't know if I still have that one downloaded on my computer or not. I might've deleted it. Looks so like. Can I, I show um, something real quick too? Yeah. Let's see. So just temporarily go to this view. So this background, as you can see in the bottom left, was created in Adobe Firefly. And so when I'm in my studio here in StreamYard, I just scroll down to my backgrounds and I can switch through. Boom. Isn't that great? Yeah. So I love it too like because multiple. what else a lot of people do is they'll create backgrounds for specific layouts. So they'll start off their stream with maybe just them on the screen and have their background be a certain one um, in that cropped view to have certain elements showing around their box. And then as it gets two on the screen, they might have a different background. Um, this is a great place where we get people who say, I want my logo to be on the other side of the screen. I didn't want it in the top uh, right-hand corner. I want it over on the left-hand side. And so we're like, you can either do that with a transparent overlay or part of your background image and move it and have it just as that actual background image over there. So it's kind of nice. It gives people that option to customize in that way. Right. So just to clarify too, if, if you're creating that logo for say the top, right, that would just be, you would create it say in Photoshop and then save it as a PNG file with the transparent background. Yep. Yeah, and so this is, it. I mean, obviously it doesn't show up well because I'm on the screen, but that's where you can have the GIF background <laughs> in there. Um, it was the only one I had on my screen real, or on my fun, com computer yeah. real fast. Um, and then you've got the option for background music. Uh, now it won't play through to you because I don't think I clicked the button to play the audio, um, but you would be able to have your background music. These are pre-built in ones, or you can upload your own. We say be very careful when you upload your own. You need to make sure that it is royalty free and that needs to be royalty free across all platforms if you're multi-streaming because what is royalty free on Facebook is not always royalty free on YouTube, vice versa. They have their own specific libraries of allowed music. Um, did to you not want me to, did you want me to click on a couple just to yeah. give people a taste? So, you know, you have anything from like, you know, dance pop kind of builds <laughs> yep so tim sone does the dance right? <laughs> yeah so he builds a bit and then you also have you know something that's more like rhythm and blues or laid yep. back Let's see into space <laughs> and these were all created specifically for Streamyard, um so they don't exist anywhere else 
night driving. <laughs> so yeah, there's quite the variety. And what's nice is in that it gives you the option to um, loop that music. So if you want it just to continue playing your entire show, it will. Or if you turn that off, then it will play for the duration of whatever that song is. I think it right. tells you. Oh, yeah, it is working fine too, yeah. Yeah. And then um, you have the ability to turn it down or not and to have the tracks fade in and out. So okay. you can kind of really start to play with your options Excellent. on that music there. And then your people, your people is your studio chat. It is where if you have multiple guests on the show with you and you're like, uh, Andrew, you're up next, you know, because you're not on screen right now. I can type that in this studio chat. The audience isn't seeing that, but that's our internal communication uh, to be able to communicate with each other because while you're talking, you can't have people talking in the background. Uh, yeah, that's helpful, the private uh, chat. So, and then you can sometimes, you know, let people know that like, hello, you're muted. So unmute your <laughs> Yes. Yeah. There, there's the mute a lot. Or um, if somebody's sharing a screen and then you're like, uh, you're not sharing your screen. You forgot that. Uh, things like that that can happen. So you want to make sure that you are utilizing this studio chat and it will chat with everyone in the studio. So you're not going to just send it to one person. If you had multiple back there, everyone will see it. Um, some other little things that are kind of nice with it, aside from the layout is we just released what was called custom layouts. Now I could do a, I have done a whole stream on custom layouts, so I don't want to go too far down that, but essentially you could choose a new layout, add items, and you could start to say, okay, I'm going to have these two people on screen and I want them over here on this side, um, instead of in the middle. And then that would be a whole new Let's see. So we're just going to save that. And so then now if I pulled that up on screen, you can see what the layout I mean. Now that is a terrible layout. Um, I would not recommend using that one, but that was quick on the fly. But you can really start to customize and move these around. I've done some fun overlap ones. Um, that right. one doesn't work very well, but I think that was a screen share one I was doing where it was down here. You, Yeah, there's the corner in the corner. So there's some of these that you can start to kind of really build out and do what you're wanting to do with, uh, to make them. Yeah, they're very nice. yeah. Yeah. I have the simple one too. Like, so there's this general view. And then if I click over here, I just, have I like those down staggered. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I always thought those look good. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, this, this is the reason why I love StreamYard so much is all this ways of personalizing your space. So when you go live, you can make it yours. You can change the color settings. You can change the, the layout settings. It's quite nice. Yeah. And it's easy. It's easy to use. Uh, you know, there are other tools out there that, that are great for streaming or for, for going live and things like that, but they can get very complicated, very cumbersome. They're taxing on your machine. Uh, if you don't have a super high-end machine, those other tools are not going to work. StreamYard is browser-based, so you can use it anywhere you can access the internet, uh, from an iPad, from an iPhone, an Android phone, uh, a Samsung tablet, your laptop, a Chromebook, your desktop. It, it doesn't matter. It will work on all of those. Uh, where it's going to come down to whether or not you're going to have issues is going to be your internet connection. You do have then, to have good internet. And I was just going to say, you know, me personally, what happened was I wanted to get into live streaming and then people were like, well, you can use OBS. And then I went to OBS and it was like, okay, you need to connect Skype to zoom. And I was like, what? And then all of a sudden people were posting about StreamYard and I was like, thank God. So yeah. I was so happy that StreamYard has it. So it's, professional but so easy to use yes. that i wasn't like going through all these sub menus and, and i always coding. joke that obs you need an engineering degree to operate <laughs> and i'm like you know i'm not saying it's a bad tool but it is cumbersome it is clunky it is yeah. hard to use and you have to have a very high powered machine um yeah, good thing Streamyard was around because i was like maybe i'm not gonna do yeah, you're like after obs never mind yeah and um 
you know, we want, we want this to be simple. We want you to be able to get in and immediately be able to click that go live button and not feel like you have to have all of the equipment and all of the tech and all of this experience that you don't have to have a fancy studio set up with pretty lights. I spent years, I owned an agency and I went live from my phone at a bar Every Friday, we had a happy hour show, um, and it was highlighting other people in our community and the cool things they were doing, but we literally had our phone. We had a lavalier mic plugged into it that was a $15 lavalier mic that we ran across the table so it could sit in front of us, and the phone was at the other end of the table, and that was how I streamed for quite a few years uh, before I was in a space that made sense before I was working out of my home and was able to build out a studio. And I didn't build this overnight. I didn't suddenly wake up one day and go, I'm going to shell out thousands of dollars on a studio because it's not necessary. I picked up a piece here. I picked up a piece there. I upgraded things over time. You know, I started off with a inexpensive Amazon ring light before I upgraded to the lights I had. I started with the camera that was built in on my computer and then eventually upgraded to a Logitech camera. And before I got my nice high-end camera that I have now, all of the stuff that's behind me, I already owned. I literally, the cabinet that's over here was on top of my washing machine. And I was like, oh, I need a shelf back there. I'm going to go grab that. And I've relocated it from the top of my washing machine to my office. Um, So I think people get very overwhelmed and stressed about the tech and the expense and the how do I do this and how do I get started? And it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It's literally as simple as whatever device you have, your laptop, your phone, the internet, and StreamYard. Great. And yeah. yeah I, think, I think I started, it was this room, which is like my living room. My, my studio office is a living room. And so without this bookcase, it was like this big gray carpet and my wife said you need to like get some like a bookcase put some things that you know show your interest mm-hmm. on it and so this is thanks to my wife i got this kind of creative background going the so, women know they've got the design right. eye there <laughs> Woman, woman's wisdom yes wins. but you know it also helps to to what i did when i was setting my space up now there's normally a little bit more in my space However, I am renovating my house at the same time. So I was packing it all up. And then I was like, oh, I have a live stream this week. I can't pack it all up. So I kind of quickly unpacked a few things. Um, Is set it up where your desk is going to be. Set your camera up. And then turn on StreamYard and sit on the screen and go, okay, what doesn't look good behind me? What do I need to go move out of that shot? What do I need to add to that shot? So you can visualize it versus looking at it that way. And you're going to go, I don't, I don't know if I'm seeing this picture Um, because you're not, because you're looking at it differently. So look at it in that space as you're setting it up. And that's what I literally did when I set mine up was I logged into StreamYard, looked at this screen and I went, okay, I like this here. Okay. I like this here. And I, I shifted things around for probably a good couple hours until I was happy with it. Nice. Um, Inside of here, we're going to go back out to this screen, and I want to show you now that if you were to create, we have the on-air webinar. Now, the webinar feature is available for the pro plan and up, but what this will do is allow you to create webinars that you can also collect registrations on. So what's really nice about that is this is a good spot to where now you can collect emails. You can have people register. You can collect their emails. You can email them out a guide you have later or any other kind of lead generation or just add them to your mailing list. I always like to say in the world of social media, we do not own the platforms we are sitting on, um, but you own that email list. So it's always a valuable tool that you can start to build out that email list because God forbid, you know, one of the major platforms shuts down tomorrow and it right. can happen. Um, I've seen it happen on others. I, I mean, I started my streaming days on Blab that does not exist anymore. Meerkat that does not exist anymore. Periscope that does not exist anymore. So I, you know, I started on all these other platforms that have closed and gone away. So if I built my entire audience there and didn't have a way to connect with them later. Uh, so I definitely recommend 
kind of having that option. And I, and I was going to say there might even be a new platform that comes out that is better than mm-hmm. Facebook. Or, don't wanna... <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I mean, Facebook's been the OG for a long time, um, yeah. but it is bound to happen at some point. Um, they've done a good job of building and evolving you know, we have seen transitions where like the new generation, uh, the, these younger ones that are coming in right now are just like, I am not on Facebook. That is where my grandmother is. And I'm like, right. Okay, I feel really old. Thank you. Um, but there are, there is still very much a viable audience there. Right. And that kind of can bring up a good point for you too. So with multi-streaming on StreamYard, we get people who ask, do I need to stream to everywhere? And I'm going to go, well, that depends on what your goals are for your streaming and where is your audience living? Um, Now, if you want to build an audience in places that they may not be, by all means, start to kind of build that show out in that space. But if you're finding that it's not getting the interaction or it's getting negative interaction, then it might be time to shift over to a different space and go, that is not where my audience is and that's Mm -hmm. not where I need to be spending my time. Um, you know, you and I talked about this yesterday, just even with, um, some of YouTube, how some of your social platforms are a little easier to build out and some are a little bit more difficult. And I'm like, you know, I, I housed my content and would send it to YouTube, but that wasn't my goal to build that channel. So I made that transition and change to go, it's going to go there, but I'm not going to go spend hours and hours of time nurturing that audience. If that's not an audience I'm trying to build. Great point. Yeah. Um, let's okay. see. What other things would you like to see, Andrew? That I, so haven't I, just, heard. I just wanted to kind of, you know, remind people, uh, especially my followers who are interested in, you know, Photoshop, Lightroom, digital art, AI art, um, you know, the features that I use. So I will have, you know, presentations like this where, you know, say Julie's presenting or I'm presenting. Um, I've also, you might have seen the Firefly 4 where there's four of us and we take turns showing, you know, the beautiful uh, generative AI art you can create with Adobe Firefly. People put in their prompts. We have fun with that. And then, you know, you can also record tutorials. So you can record and, you know, upload your tutorials to your YouTube channel or, you know, Facebook, et cetera. And then one thing that I'm not sure if I have it here set up, but, um, I do have also, let's see, it's for presenting. And I do a lot of the tutorial recordings, even for our internal team members. Um, I don't use Loom to record my screen. I go straight into StreamYard, share my screen, do my recording, and then I'll send it to a team member when they need uh, training in something. And speaking of training, uh, you can also do, you know, one-on-one or small group uh, lessons. Mm -hmm. So if I do my Photoshop or Lightroom tutoring, I might bring them into StreamYard, just, you know, email them the link. They just come in on a web browser. Uh, Traditionally, Chrome is what people use. And then they're in, and then we can have a nice private uh, lesson. And then uh, what I was saying before, too, is um, if I were to share my, I'm not going to do it now, but if I were to share my screen, I can upload a series of like a PDF slideshow. Yes. And so if I'm presenting my digital art, I can show a series of work I've done, say, this year. And that's a great way to, um, you know, and then think about that. You could springboard using StreamYard as a way for like interviews. Yep. So if you're like interviewing for something, you could show a slideshow of your designs or your work. So there really is a lot of really great opportunities with StreamYard. So lo- love it. I love yeah. StreamYard. So yeah, the slide sharing is, um, I use it all the time um, because I do a lot of speaking, a lot of presenting on StreamYard or on community building, social media, things like that as the social media and community manager for StreamYard. And I use the slide share feature all the time. Um, I love when somebody wants to have me on to present to their audience and they're like, and I use StreamYard. And I'm like, oh, oh thank God. I know what I'm doing in there. Right. And you can even uh, video clips too. So you can do video mm-hmm. clips. Yes. And that's where, um, so when I mentioned before in the video library that you can upload the videos into the brand tab and those are limited to 10 minutes. If you, um, struggle with, if you're going, my video is more than 10 minutes. Uh, I just, I need a longer video clip. That's where then you can share the video clip 
directly from your computer versus uploading it. The only thing I say with that is definitely make sure you have a strong internet connection when you do that one, because that does eat up a lot of bandwidth and you want to make sure it's sharing properly. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. And then I saw Barbara has a question over there that will StreamYard have a studio teleprompter anytime soon? I don't know if it's on our current roadmap. I do know that it has been discussed. They're looking at options on how that could work. Um, there's some some complications that kind of come with, in with that, partially on the spacing of the screen. Um, you know, if you're on a bigger monitor, on a dual monitor, it works out really well. Anybody who's on smaller laptops or phones, things like that, it starts to get a little complicated in the spacing. A tip um, that I can give you if you are needing something, if you have an iPad, then um, there is a teleprompter app for the iPad. And I use that quite frequently. And I will actually just prop it right in front of my monitor and use that as my, uh, my teleprompter. And as I'm speaking, it will work like an actual teleprompter and, and scroll through. Nice. Now, um, before we do the giveaway, shall I just uh, let people know that I can offer them a 14-day free trial? Yes. Yeah. We definitely want you to try that out, want you to be able to get in there and kind of see if that'll work for you. Right. And, and so do know that I will be posting this in the comments section or the post section of the event pages on Facebook. And we'll be updating the description on YouTube. So it will be there. Or message me on Facebook. Just yeah. be nice. <laughs> and if you get in there and you start using StreamYard and you're going, oh my gosh, I still don't know what I'm doing. Go to our YouTube channel. We have a whole tutorial series there. Um, right. on, so you just search StreamYard on YouTube. You can reach out to our support team 24-7. No matter where you are in the country, it doesn't matter if you're paying a customer or a free customer or not even a customer yet, they are available at streamyard.com forward slash contact. And so right. we've got a support team there that's available all the time to answer your questions and to help you out. Excellent. So shall we let them know about the uh, yeah. giveaway? Let's do it. So yeah. We're going to so. give away six months of the StreamYard Pro plan, um, which is going to give you the most advanced features you can get um, on our regular plans without going into the business tier category. And with that StreamYard Pro plan, you'll get the six months. It's as simple as if you win, you're going to sign up for the free plan with your email. And then you're going to contact me and give me that email that you signed up with. And I will upgrade your plan. Great. So all you need to do is type in the comments with whatever social network you're watching from. Hashtag free SY or looks like, sounds like freezy. It does. <laughs> Didn't realize Hashtag. that until we typed it out and we're like, oh, well, we're going to run with it. Yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah. Hashtag freezy or free SY. Yep. And we'll give you guys some time to put that in because we do know that there is a slight delay uh, between when we put that up on the screen and then when you guys can actually get them typed in. Yep. Barbara typed it in. So that's awesome, the Barbara. hashtag freezy. Type that in for a chance to win six months of the StreamYard Pro Plan. Hashtag wow. freezy in the comments with wherever you are watching from. I love that. Um, you know, and one of the things that we want to do and be able to give back at StreamYard is the ability for us to not just be like, hey, buy this tool. Good luck. You know, I said we've got our, our support team that's there 24-7. We have our Facebook group that has about 27,000 members in it. Nice. And it's the StreamYard community on Facebook. You can request to join that. And that's a great place to ask questions, get advice. We're always sharing information and content in there as well. We like to do giveaways in there. So uh, it's a great place to join if you are interested in StreamYard or interested in just live streaming, because there's even just a lot of live streaming help in there. Well, it looks like people are being shy about the uh, hashtags. So, yeah. so far, it looks like um, Barbara would be the, the winner. All right. Well, I mean... Should we we do it anyways? The Because uh, I love the uh, the graphics. Yeah, we'll bring it up and we'll talk about what this is. So let's share the screen before we hit the, the draw. Uh, right. 
I can well, do Barbara, start collecting can comments add, first though, right? If you win, Barbara, I can add six months to your account that you just won't have to pay for. So you'll just get six months credit. Cool. Um, Let me just jump over here and I'll share my screen. Yeah. So, yeah. Now this is our giveaway tool. And what I love about this is this is free for all users of StreamYard. And what you would do to use it is you would just open a second tab and go to streamyard.com forward slash giveaway. You would set it okay. up by selecting what live stream you're going to um, have going up. And then you're going to select whatever phrase you want. And it can be, uh, you know, if we have the town hall um, every Sunday for StreamYard, it's hashtag the yard. So it's whatever phrase you want it to be. It can just be something that applies to you. I personally change mine up every show I do because I like to keep people guessing and that way they don't jump in and immediately type it. That's just me. Um, but you know, some our, our founders keep theirs the same every week and it's consistent. Everybody knows it's hashtag the yard. And then you just tell people, go ahead and type that into the comments. And once they type it into the comments, they're entered and they have that ability to get in there and then you do have to have more than one to draw. So if we don't get more than one, then it'll be Barbara. Uh, but it won't normally it'll let you draw. So hopefully yeah, I don't know why people are being shy about it. You know? We got we got Facebook user there that his they didn't select the the comments. So uh, but they can type the comment in, type the hashtag. Yeah, hashtag um, freezy, type that in the comments wherever yeah. you're watching from, so you can be entered to win six months of the StreamYard Pro plan. Let's see. I'm gonna and go over to YouTube the, and the I'm going to select I have it. Is, um, if someone already has the pro plan, then they would get uh, six months free. Uh, Just six months of credit account. added. Yep. Great. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to go over and I'm going to add my entry on YouTube. And that way we can, let me find my comments here. I see two entries now. Yes. Oh, we got two now. Okay. There we go. Yes. Yeah, Susan, Susanna Erickson. Yeah. I want to make sure we could show show the the drawing tool. So, Barbara says I've never won any of the Streamyard drawings since Streamyard launched. So, there are I've, a lot I've of people that. that watch every week. You have one. I, I remember. One. I think I was watching that episode when you won. I was like, oh my gosh. So, <laughs> yeah, in, the, in the duck. What, what is the name? What is the name of the Streamyard duck? His name is Puddles. Puddles. <laughs> yep. Right. Okay. Shall I do the draw? Do the draw. Okay. So for six months of the StreamYard Pro Plan. It's either Susanna or Barbara. <laughs> and, Barbara, won. Barbara. Hey. and you know what we're going to do? Susanna, I'm going to provide it for you as well. Barbara, you. you said you already have it, um, but you wanted a duck. So uh, reach out to me. Uh, on LinkedIn or Facebook, and I will get you a duck. And then Susanna, okay. we will get you the six months of the pro plan as well. Very so nice. uh, just go to streamyard.com, sign up for the free plan, and then reach out to uh, me. You can actually email me, julie at streamyard.com, and okay. uh, email me what uh, email address you signed up with, and then I will get you upgraded. And Barbara, email me at julie at streamyard.com, your address, and I will get you a duck. Yeah, she said, I really wanted a duck. Nope. Well, we're, we're going to get you a said, yeah. so. Yep. So we got you taken care of. That's right. Excellent. Great. So yeah, just a reminder, you can get a 14-day free trial when you sign up with my link, which I will be putting in the description of, or the post in the Facebook groups and in the description in YouTube. Um, and then, you know, that's once again there, which is easier to just click the link than question mark FPR. Yes, <laughs> I know. The one thing we get asked often and and is how come we can't click on the screen? How come we can't have clickable links? And it's not a StreamYard limitation. It is a platform right. limitation. So Facebook sure. doesn't have clickable links. Um, YouTube does, but they don't work when you're streaming from a third-party tool. They actually don't work when you're live streaming in general, even if you were directly on YouTube. Um, oh, so oh always where... share it in comments or in the description. Yeah. So, But we always get asked that, like, how come we can't click the links? And I'm like, it's the platform limitations. 
And then, you know, we went over so many different features. So just to remind you, yes, I will be posting the link to the recording, which will go to my YouTube. So uh, do consider also subscribing to my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash digital art drew. So consider subscribing to digital art drew where I do various live events, Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Firefly and Adobe express tutorials and uh, you know, great stuff. So awesome. thanks. Well, this was fun. Yes. So thanks everyone for coming and uh, please do share the recording with your friends and review it there. There really is a lot of amazing features in StreamYard. It's, it really has made it just so much easier for me to get up and running with live streaming for my creative, you know, streams and tutorials without having to have all this other stuff I have to worry about when I want to just focus on my message, on right. my creativity. Yeah. And Barbara says, great, great YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Susanna says, oh, thank you. So Perfect. Yes. Glad we could get you that. So definitely, again, my email is julie at streamyard.com. It's a pretty easy one to remember. And just get me that email address and your address, and I'll get those sent out. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Julie. This was really great and very informative. Went through so many different factors of how to utilize and set up StreamYard. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you. And Guys, reach out if you have questions or need help. I'm here. And Barbara says, thanks so much for everything. I love StreamYard. Nice. Awesome. Love it. Thanks, everybody.